Welcome to the GameDev.TV Community Podcast. I'm your host, KB, and I would like to introduce you to industry professionals and people who successfully made their path to the video game industry. I hope that you will enjoy the podcast and get useful tips that will bring you closer to achieving your dreams. Now, let's get right into the podcast. All right, welcome to the show, G. Hey, introduce yourself a little bit, let the GameDev.TV students know a little bit about who you are, and then we'll go from there. Okay. Uh, my name is G. Hey Lee. I'm a senior concept artist at Unbroken Studios. Uh, I've been working for about six years at this point. Uh, some of the titles that I shipped include Call of Duty Black Ops 3 and 4. And I also worked on a uh, cinematic, teaser cinematic for Valorant. Wow, that's a lot. Some big titles. <laughs> <laughs> now, when did you, what's your earliest memory of working on art? Um, I was... I was drawing, I guess, earliest as uh, six, when I was six years old. Um, I drew a lot on the back of books. It would have these like- Oh, like in school? Um, yeah, like in blank pages. I used to draw a lot. And I would also find blank pages on the back of like calendars and stuff. So I used to draw a lot on those two. <laughs> Um, yeah. Was it like really good stuff? Was it like stick figures? Uh, no, I mean, I, well, I started with, you know, like, like a sun on the corner, <laughs> with, like, you know, like with the back, hands in the back, you know, I mean, I started like serious? that. <laughs> yeah, but, um, I mean, I was like six. Or well, no, because I used to do that when I was younger too, but it would be yeah. all stick figures and there'd be a little sun in the corner. That's how I always started them too. Yeah, but, um, I... I used to draw my mom's friends and stuff, and I would get like money from them and stuff like that. So that was pretty cool too. Wait, so um, six years old, you're getting money? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, it's like I would I would give it to my mom. But yeah. <laughs> Dang, look at you making money while you were six. Did you start doing that for, like in high school, so I'd be like, yo, I can make you something, but it's gonna cost you. Uh, I did like a couple like commissions and stuff in high school but it wasn't anything crazy okay so did you start practicing or you just kept doing like little doodles like that for a little bit while you were growing I mean, up so i used to watch a lot of cartoons um growing up so i used to draw a lot of like fan art um okay. i did a lot of sailor moon like dragon ball pokemon all that good stuff so i think that kind of helped me practice Okay. And what was your favorite I, show? Hmm? What was your favorite show to draw? I draw a lot of Sailor Moon. Sailor Moon, for sure. okay. Yeah. I draw a lot of Goku. Goku, okay. You ever draw on, like, Avatar Last Airbender? No, I... So, I'm from Korea. Ah, uh, okay. So, I, I wasn't aware of, like, Avatar and Have a lot. Have you started watching it? Uh, I watched a little bit, but not too much. Dang. missing out you got to watch the rest after this podcast <laughs> when did you say you want like when did you decide hey i want to be a concept artist or do this for a living so i didn't know concept art was a thing until a senior year oh. in high school okay i i was honestly like i didn't know the difference between entertainment arts entertainment design like i it was just mm. I was confused but I just I knew I wanted to draw for like games and movies but I didn't know like the full details until like later on maybe in like a sophomore year in college okay yeah so then after high school you were just like I'm just gonna go to uh college and see where I want to be in something with art is, is that how it was yeah, because I, I knew I liked drawing and painting, mm -hmm. and so, yeah. Now, to get better, did you just, did you try to go on YouTube? Did you take any courses? Did you take any classes in high school? Or were you just... uh, in high school, I went to uh, art prep school. Okay. So, I was working on my paintings, 
I did some oil paintings and acrylic paintings and stuff to submit to get into Otis. After college, besides from taking classes in college, I took some classes at Brainstorm, okay. um, Red Engine, which doesn't exist anymore. Oh, no. Yeah, and like Concept Design Academy, too. That was also, a lot. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's like, you know, two or three classes here and there. Oh, yeah, I see. It's like one month. Okay. Yeah. And then was there like a moment when you were like, my art's really good, but then somebody was like, hey, you need to like step it up or like you need to try doing different techniques or doing this and that? Like, when was there a moment where you're like, oh, I need to really step up my game? So I, when I was in college, I, I thought my stuff was pretty good, you know, yeah. I was like, I was like, oh, I'm pretty good or whatever. And then, <laughs> you know, my teacher told me, one of my teachers told me, like, you're not as good as you think you are. Dang. And like that, hearing that, I was like, whoa, like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> what did you I like, guess feel when she said uh, that? I was like, kind of taken back. And I was like, I was like, oh, he's, he's right. You know, like, I mean, cause like, you know, I'm in this college and like, you know, I don't, I don't even know what I'm doing, you know? And like, I just kind of like thought about like, you know, outside of school and, you know, all the artists that I admire and stuff. And I was like, yeah, he's right. I got a lot of ways to go. So what, what year was this when, when he said that? What was like, do you remember like that moment you were like, oh. Um, I think I was like a sophomore in college. Okay. Yeah. And then after that happened, you were like, all right, I got to prove him wrong? Uh, I guess, yeah, in a way. I mean, I just like started working really hard, you know. I mean, I was working hard back then too, but I was just sort of like, yeah, now I really got to like, you know, step on my game and get it to the industry level and stuff. So what did that look like? Did you like sacrifice some things to be like I need to work harder like work maybe 12 hours a day instead of like three or I'm curious to know how you study I so I would honestly just focus on class assignments you know I was taking some concept classes and um, a lot of the times I was like staying in the labs you know like the computer labs with my friends and I would pull all-nighters Dang. A lot of a lot of all nighters. Yeah. How'd you function? Uh I don't know. I just <laughs> I guess, you know, my age kinda allowed me yeah. to kinda like go through it and I used to drink a lot of like monster drinks mm -hmm. and stuff. So. Yeah, those help. <laughs> yeah. So for those like all nighters, were you just drawing like a specific assignment or did you have like a goal in mind? You're like, I'm gonna draw character today or environment today or something. It was mostly on focused on the assignment that I was doing at the time, but I was taking like character classes and also environment classes. So yeah, I was doing both and all the time. <laughs> yeah. So like, did you get like a zone? Did you have like, here, I'm gonna sit down. Did you have your like stuff laid out and then go listen to music? Uh, I mean, you know, I was working with a lot of students next to me. So I mean, I would get distracted here and there, but um, just, you know, like a standard, you know, put on some music and just, mm -hmm. just go painting. But yeah, I remember back in those days, I was listening to a lot of like bass nectar. Okay. Or like, <laughs> or like, <laughs> yeah, just a lot of those like, you know, like instrumental like type stuff. No, that's awesome. Yeah, because it's like you go focus, but it's still like, you feel like you're in a movie or like it's like an action. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm going to do this. <laughs> 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 that's so cool and then w was there a point when your teacher was like you're actually as good as you say now mm. <laughs> <laughs> never no. oh man it's <laughs> a tough teacher yeah i mean he he did like you know when i did you know ship you know the like the black Ops series and everything like he reached out and said congrats and everything so that was pretty cool. <laughs> That's awesome. He was like, I knew you had it in you. I just had to like nudge you there. Yeah. <laughs> now, do you think if he didn't say that you would have worked harder on your artwork? Or do you think eventually you would have? Like, do you think he really was like that, like, 
push? Uh, I mean, no, I don't think so. I think I would have probably just worked as hard as I did. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, yeah, hey, it was, it's not important. From those six years, when did you start getting like internships? Or was that all just studying and learning and practicing? So after my junior year, I got the internship at Treyarch. Okay. And that was three months. And when I was about to go back to school after the internship for a uh, senior year, I got a offer for a contract from Treyarch. So I ended up staying there. Dang. How'd you feel with getting that contract? Oh, it, it was awesome. <laughs> I was like, yay! <laughs> You're like, I made it, guys. Mom, look, I made it. Yeah. <laughs> so, was the, what was the process getting the internship for Treyarch? You just, was it the school helping you out, or did you just apply? Like... Yeah, there was an internship there at school, and okay. Treyarch was one of the places that came. And I was, like, really trying hard to, like, impress them with like, my sketchbook. Please. and. <laughs> <laughs> were, you, were you playing Call of Duty at the time, and you were like, they have an opening? Like, I need to go do that. Uh, no, I wasn't playing Call of Duty at the time, but I did play World at War, and I was really, like, mm -hmm. you know, excited. Yeah, because I always love Treyarch better than Infinity Ward. I just think they make better Call of Duties, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we'll see now, too, with the new Black Ops, which one's the best. But, uh, but yeah, so then after you got into the internship, what was that like? Was that everything you thought it was? Was it a little bit more? Was it different? Like, uh, it was a lot different. I thought I would be always painting cool stuff, you know, mm. like cool, like new pieces. But actually, you know, in production, you do a lot of grunt work and a lot of red lines and things like that, which makes like, sense. What is grunt work in the art industry like? Is that um, a lot of call out sheets? Call out uh, sheets, okay. You know, like drawings, like quick drawings. Uh, like red line drawings, you know. What for, is red line drawings? You know, um, you do like a quick drawing, you know, put put these assets here and put puddles there, you know, basically doing like a quick work to get the quality up in okay. terms of, yeah. Now, how much of that was actually like used? Because I know it's probably like they say most of them. It. Most of them? Most okay, that's them, awesome. Yeah. 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 So you were like, yo, my work's in the game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So was that, was it difficult first? Was it like a weird transition where you were like, oh, I don't know how to do this? Or it was just like, oh, this is easy. It's another assignment. Uh, initially, uh, it was hard, but I eventually got used to it. Okay. Yeah. Now, what advice would you give to other artists who maybe aren't going to school, but want to get like the level you're at? Uh, I would say, do your best. <laughs> also, um, there's tons of online resources out there. Definitely take advantage of those. You know, a lot of Gumroad tutorials are really useful. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's useful even for professionals. So, um, and even if you're not going to like traditional art schools, like. Art Center, Otis, there's other options like Brainstorm and CDA, which are more concept based. So definitely, if you are in the area, you should definitely look into taking those classes because it helped me a lot. So they can do that, but also let's say they're just really going on their own. Like what should they focus on? Or even if they're going on the school, what should they do at their like free time to really improve their skills? Should it be like, do a character design or like do speed drawing? Like what is it that they should really like that 80-20 rule? Like what is that 20% they can do that get the 80% of the results? I would say be very proactive and yeah. reach out to other artists that they admire. Because then, you know, the worst thing that can happen is they're just not going to reply. Okay. But if they do see your work, they can kind of suggest what you need to work on um, depending on your skill set and where you are in terms of your art skills. Okay. Yeah. And then portfolios. This is a good one. 
how do you know when it's right for the portfolio? Like what, what do you look for? For instance, let's say you, when you did your portfolio, what did you do to make it stand out? What did I do to make it stand out? I guess I focused on what I wanted to see. Mm -hmm. You know, never let your taste or what you like go into waste and make it generic because that's the worst thing that you can do. Okay. Like, you know, focus on what you like and make sure that you, you, you have that voice shown in your work because that's what's going to make it stand out. What looks like a typical day for an artist there? At Treyarch? Yeah. Uh, you get to work, you have a kickoff meeting and, you know, in that meeting, you discuss, oh, what are you going to work on today? Oh, we need this concept for this area and this map. Usually, you are assigned in a team with the map, and you kind of focus on those areas. Um, so you get, a, you get an assignment, and after the kickoff meeting, you 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 work on your painting for maybe like a couple days mm -hmm. and you finish the painting, you make a call out sheet and then you get it reviewed by the art director and then they approve it and then you ship it. And then, you know, the rest of the team can see it and then the level designers look at your concept and based on that, they build it according to what they see in the concept. And that's what you see in the final product. Wow. Yeah. And so then um, you made some multiplayer levels or just levels in general for the beginning of the game for the third one? Was it third one or fourth one? No, third one because it's a story. Uh, I saw some so I worked on, yeah. I worked on three and four. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I was working on uh, Black Ops 3, I was mostly doing campaign levels, but I did okay. do some multiplayer ones as well, like a couple ones, but mostly campaign levels and a lot of zombie levels. A lot of zombie levels? Like which yeah. one? Did you do the, uh, uh, what's it called? The swamp one? Um, yeah, I did. I did. That one is yeah. by far one of my favorite zombie maps. Oh, awesome. Yeah, like, <laughs> you don't understand how many hours I put in that one. This is so cool with the spider and then the giant um, Oh, I designed the it? spider. You designed the spider? Yeah. Okay, so whose <laughs> idea was the spider? Was it your idea to make the whole spider or you just designed it? Oh, I just designed it. But still cool because that thing was creepy. When I first saw that, I was like, what is this? This is never in zombies. <laughs> yeah. yeah. How, so what's it like working on a zombie map? Is that like, uh, it's been a lot of fun? Yeah. That's fun. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, eh, eh, it was more fun playing it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's it's definitely really fun, you know, like, because cause compared to multiplayer, you can get really dramatic with the lighting in zombie maps. So I really enjoy the part for sure. Now, when you, so you do concept art, right? So that's like a combination of the characters and the environment. Mm -hmm. So did you do any cool like drawings with the uh, the four characters like Dempsey, Nikolai, Takio? Like in uh, I didn't do designs for them, but I did do a lot of um, storyboard drawings. And okay. also I worked on motion comics for the uh, Black Ops 4 for the zombies. So I did paint a lot of Nikolai, Dempsey. And hey. <laughs> That's so Have cool. You. <laughs> oh my gosh, the dream come true. <laughs> oh my goodness. And then, what is like the hardest part about working at, for instance, Treyarch? That's different from other companies. Just like, like one word. Uh, the hardest part. The hardest part. I don't. I mean, it's. It was 
I wouldn't say it was hard, but I guess the production and how, how, you know, it's like every three years they pump out a game, right? So it was challenging in ways where, you know, sometimes you have to crunch. Mm. And um, that was probably one of the hardest aspects of working at Treyarch. But the punch culture got a lot better. So, yeah. yeah. Especially nowadays with people really like talking about it. A lot of people work on it, but it's still, it's, it's kind of like, at the moment, it's part of the game, I guess. It's part of the yeah. Like, yeah, you're in the industry's crunch, and it's like, yeah, all right. But yeah. uh, you know, we'll see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, is that like no? Because I've never been in the crunch situation like that. Is it? Is it really like? How did you deal with that? Was it just like, oh, you know, I'm just gonna get, you know, work hard, or was it more like I gotta like plan this out so it doesn't like burn me out? Hmm. Well, in the middle of it, you just kind of do it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You just kind of tough it out, you know. <laughs> but, um, I mean, you know, like, I just made sure to take rest outside of work. And, you know, as much as I love working on personal work, all that stuff had to kind of, like, put on hold. And I just kind of, like... Yeah, it's just like working and then resting when I'm home and just, just, just being nicer to myself. And yeah. just, it's okay to not be painting all the time. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, relax. Do yeah. Something else. yeah. <laughs> was it was it hard? Like, would you ever get like a moment where you're like, oh, I don't want to be doing it? Or like, did you lose friendships? Or did you lose moments that you found valuable? Was it really hard? Uh, I mean, I didn't lose any friends over it. What was your favorite part about working there? Favorite part? Just, just getting to work on such big project and, you know, when, when we do ship the game and seeing the fans react, that was really exciting. Nice. That's probably the most exciting part. No. What is the thing that keeps you like going? What like motivates you? Is it creating art for the people? Is it creating art for yourself? Is it just making games? Um, ultimately, I love art. Like I love creating art. I love painting and drawing, and you know, I just hope that you know by doing this, I can help inspire others and. Um, you know, I mean, there are times where things get really hard and as much as I put a lot of pressure on myself, mm -hmm. um, there are times where it gets hard when when you put in the work, but you don't get the results back right away. Mm -hmm. So when things like that happens, um, what I tell myself is like just don't give up like you know like you can take breaks but never give up you know Love and it, that's, yeah. yeah and that's kind of how i've been you know i i i didn't stop trying i just kept going and you know and look i, you I took breaks yeah, yeah i took breaks but you know eventually you know you get to where i wanted to be and you know i'll continue doing it you know yeah, I mean, why do you love it? So why not? Uh, so I was just drawing a lot of fan art, and I was just like doing art for myself for mm -hmm. um up until up until high school, and I started painting, 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 in order to get to college for about a year. And I got in, and then, you know, from then on, you know, I, it was just, you know, taking life drawing classes yeah. and painting classes and things like that. And I did that for three years. Three years. So, okay, so probably like four, four years of like intense focus. Yeah, but then even before that, I just enjoyed 
drawing like a lot. I drew a lot of fan art in high school. Yeah, so, so you you had a lot of experience. So the, the thing <laughs> is, it's like there's for game TV and any game developer who's like starting out. It's always like I see someone else doing it. I want to do that like in six months, and it's like no, don't. That it takes longer than that because then you burn yourself out, especially if you don't make it. So yeah. I like to. When all the people come on a podcast, I'm like, so how, when did you start? When is this and that? That way everybody can get a picture of like, oh, it's not going to take me like just a year. It's going to take me longer. So let me like be more patient. Let me enjoy the journey. Let me create what I want to create. Let me not burn myself out. Cause, and then mm-hmm. don't give up because that's the greatest thing. It's like you can, for instance, programming. It takes me maybe four years, which it did, to like actually understand entirely what I'm doing. But mm-hmm. it was like, it's like I kept trying to take class and stuff. Then you get that moment where you go, oh. I get it, or I am confident in what I'm doing, or this and that. But it takes it takes time, and it's don't beat yourself up. Like you'll get there, mm-hmm. whether you're in school, whether you're self learning, whether you're going back and changing careers. Like there's there's a time when it just takes time, and you can do what you want to do. Just practice, practice, practice. Sometimes all nighters. Sometimes it takes sacrifices. But yeah. Mhm. So. Exactly. Awesome. Now after Treyarch, where did you go? Um. After Treyarch. I did a couple freelance here and there, um, but after that, I I got a contract at Blur, and that's where I was working on Valorant teaser cinematic. I was doing matte paintings there for about three months. That's so cool because I play a little bit of Valorant. Nice. I haven't played it yet. <laughs> oh, what are you doing? <laughs> I know. Like, I, I, like I, <laughs> I it's, it's interesting because it's like I noticed there's some people who just like I've never played the game I made. I was like, oh, what? Yeah. Like there's this one guy who was working on the new Star Wars Fallen Order. I was like, oh, so did you like playing the games? Like I never touched it. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's interesting. I mean, you know, like working on it for like three four years that's kind yeah. of like playing it i mean i, I like you I know with, true with black ops 3 and 4 you know i was always on the dev kit you know flying around and stuff so that's kind of like playing i guess right? i guess you're right yeah that's that's exciting you're like i played before you guys can even touch it so get, get right? off of that <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i haven't played valorant yet but i i should but that's yeah. a very pretty game yeah it really is I love colorful games like that. Yeah. And then there comes the drum roll on Broken Studios, which is started in May 2020, right this year. It's funny because I think I did a podcast with Autumn in May. Oh. And then I think Megan bef- after that, but then she's joined like I think a week or two weeks after or, or shortly. I was like, wow, look at all these people in Broken Studios. Now I got to <laughs> <laughs> just send me all of them. That's... <laughs> but uh, but how, how was that? What was the interview process like uh it was pretty straightforward um i think i did two interviews with them and you know i got hired but uh yeah it's been a it's been a great experience the people there are super nice um i think i what i love about the studio is that i get to have a lot of creative input and I feel like my opinions are valued. Um, I get to talk a lot with the creative director, which I haven't experienced before. And that's been a really pleasant experience. Like, cause like our creative director is amazing. But yeah, that's yeah it's been great. One. Yeah. How do you, how do you feel the first time talking to her? Uh, her, um, it, it was great. She was really good to talk to. She's really nice. and. Very easy to talk to, so yeah, it was great. This is this is new to me. Let's uh, how we do this. <laughs> when it comes to being like a senior concept artist, is that like way different than uh, just a regular concept artist, or is it just you have more like seniority and? It's it's. I feel like it's not too different, but I, there's aspects of you know um, training training the people that might not be as experienced as you, and that's. That's been that's been good. That's been a good experience. But uh, yeah. Now, when you train them, what is your advice? To, like, how do you train the new concept artist? Uh, I mean, it's not so much you know, training them to uh do 
you know, specific like assignments or anything, but then, you know, just like kind of like giving them a helping hand. And when they, you know, ask for feedback, I give them the feedback. And, you know, if I see something that can be, you know, improved, I mention it to them, you know, but then also got to make sure that, you know, letting them know they're doing a good job, and, you know, also pointing out things that I like about their work and things like that. The things you don't like, you know, <laughs> the scary part, you're like, everything's great, but it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Now, has that uh, how's that experience been though? Is it like you like training people or? Uh, yeah, I definitely want to do more of it, and also, yeah, I want to look into teaching at some point as well. Oh, really? So, yeah. So, have you ever done like a YouTube like series or teaching people, man? Oh, YouTube, no. <laughs> or, or like, okay, like your personal work. What do you work on your own right now, or is it just like small art pieces, like an art station? Uh, I've been working on a few pieces, just, just here and there. I've been doing a lot of story moment drawings, which has been really fun. Um, and doing some more uh, character designs and stuff. Have you watched any shows recently that do any more, like, fan art? <laughs> Ooh, I have one. <laughs> I recently watched the uh, the Dragon Ball um, <laughs> Super Broly. Super Broly. Uh -huh. What's that? Dragon Ball. I see. I'm the one person that's like, eh. When it comes to you know Dragon Ball, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I, everybody's like, you should get into it. Man. Nah, I mean, I'm not yeah. super into Dragon Ball usually, but I watched that film and I was like, wow. Like, yo. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Okay. The real question is who we win, Batman? I mean, not Batman, Superman or Goku? <laughs> <laughs> Goku. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Okay. What was the hardest part of your like, career journey? What was the moment where you were like, I am not doing too good right now. This is a challenge, an obstacle I have to get through. Um, I guess... I guess the hardest part is dealing with life struggles mm. while also trying to stay professional. I guess that was one thing. But yeah. yeah. Life, life likes to get in a way, you know, just when you least expect, it's like, ah, I got a surprise. Yeah. But, uh, but, but, but sometimes I feel like those moments too also help create like the greatest art mm. or like stories or experiences. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Mm. Ooh, I like this. What is one of those, like, then looking back, let's, like, look back at all those years. What was one of the things we were just like, that was a big waste of time and I should have done something differently? As in, like, maybe that type of training was just not as effective as I thought it was. Or I could have done a different type of training. Um, I don't, I don't have, I don't have stuff like that. Because, like, I feel like even if, even if, even if it was um, something that I regret at the moment, I feel like at the end, it helps me. Mm -hmm. Everything is a learning experience. And I try to think of it as like, there's no such thing as mistakes. It was only learning experiences. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Look at that. Motivating everyone. You didn't make a mistake. Just, just learn. Mm -hmm. What is your favorite game? What's my favorite game at the moment? It's mm -hmm. Ghost, Ghost of Tsushima. I oh, really, that's, in, <laughs> yeah. that's phenomenal. <laughs> I love that game. I've been playing that game like a lot. <laughs> uh, have you been? What, what actor are you on? Um, do you even two. know? Because I didn't even know there was like I was so I into think it. Act two. The, the, you know how there's like that one big island and then you know there's a next section mm -hmm. i'm on You're, that next section oh, okay Cause it's like, that's when it gets intense yeah how are you in that one uh kind of in the early okay cool, cool. Yeah, yeah you're gonna you're gonna love it 
Okay. It gets insane. Yeah, it's so I love that game so much. I can't wait. <laughs> yeah, because I talked I to Liz last a couple weeks ago, and she was writing some of the characters and some of the stuff that was happening, and I was just it was just so cool to talk about it because I'm like, this game. How did you? Especially the environment. The environment is my favorite part. Mm. Oh my goodness. The environment and the combat are just so beautiful. Can Amazing. you imagine just like working on that and being like, let's, let's make this beautiful game with the yellow um, trees? I... And the- that's my, that's blowing. my dream. Yeah. That's your dream? You work at Sucker Punch? <laughs> oh, hell yeah. <laughs> Do you ever yeah, play Sly sure. Cooper games? Um, no, but, uh, yeah, I think Ghost was the first, um, mm. Sucker Punch game that I played, but. Now you're like, I want to work for them forever. Game. Yeah. yeah. Maybe one day. We'll be making concept art for them. Maybe. <laughs> See, cross your fingers, hopefully. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Now, do you play games or watch shows or stuff to inspire you to keep, like, doing what you're doing? Uh, for sure. I mean, I, I do love games and watching movies and films and anime in general. So, and everything that I watch, you know, it always inspires me, so. When you're doing the uh, concept art for these studios, do you take stuff from other, like, shows and the video games and your imagination and just create this yeah I wonder how that works you're just like they're like giving an idea and you're like okay how am I gonna do this today mm-hmm. yeah for sure I mean I have my own kind of visual library of like list of characters that I like that I can take inspiration from you know so um for some reason I tend to think a lot of like fighting game characters because I feel like they are, there's like a good amount of like archetypes and stuff like that. So yeah, and I love like playing fighting games growing up. So I tend to just like turn to those for inspiration a lot of times, I feel like. Which fighting games are you talking about? Like Super Smash Bros, Mortal Kombat, Injustice, Uh, what are we? King of Fighters. King of Fighters, okay, never heard Um, of that one. Guilty Gear, and, uh, yeah, it's, like, it it was really big in Korea back in the 90s, um, yeah, I played a lot of Camp Fighter 99, um, yeah. And you're a fighter. (laughs) (laughs) Hmm? What made you like them so much? Uh... I don't know. I just I just grew up playing it. It was in the arcades, and you know, I just you know I played it, and the characters are really cool, and I get to do like cool moves and stuff. You know, I I played it a lot with my friends. Um, you know, just yeah, that's just so get, cool. Yeah, get some coins and like play with them or like watch them play. You know, like arcades in Korea were really big in the nineties, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the yeah. 90s. Yeah. Good times. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what, let's define the visual library for all the students and everyone listening. What is the visual library to you? Like, is it, yeah, what is it? It's, it's everything that I watched and played growing up. Mm-hmm. You know, everything that I saw, everything, it's everything. <laughs> now, do you draw everything you've seen or is it just anything you've seen in your head? Because I know some courses I've, I've taken before where it's like just draw everything so that way you can visually like draw it again when you have to let's say draw like a purse so it's like oh i've drawn like 10 purses before so now i can make my own unique purse or like to build their visual library like what what advice would you have would you be like just draw everything that you see so that you can better draw it it's more so just observations okay When you build your visual library, it doesn't necessarily mean draw it. It means, you know, consuming is also adding to the visual library. You know, it's everything that you see, not draw. So, yeah, I guess that's what I would say about building your visual library. Just, like, consume media and enjoy it. So and you tell everybody really... to play games all day? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not every day, you no, know? know. But yeah. then, you know, just, like, just find inspiration and in things that you enjoy. And, you know, that's also part of 
you know, finding your own voice in your art, you know, it's like having things that you like and kind of voicing that into your art. So it's the hardest ones. Like, what is my voice? What is my art style? It's like, I don't know. You got to go out there and I guess try a bunch of things, take from a bunch of experiences and shows and then mm -hmm. make it happen. Yeah. Which again takes time. That's why we say take time because you can't just like make it happen today. Be like, oh, well, this is my art style. It's like, is it? I don't know. We don't know. Take. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Now, you think they can have visual libraries for all type of mediums? Like, let's say, like programmer or um, music. I think music is bigger probably because it's more creative. But like, do you think there's like a, their own type of visual library? Yeah. I think so. I mean, for singers, you know, they, they grow up listening to a whole different types of music. And that's also kind of like a, you know, so call it a music library or a yeah, listen something my listening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. I like that. Now, when somebody, I know you said don't give up, but like, let's say somebody did come up to you and says, hey, mm -hmm. like, I've been doing this for a while and I'm just either I'm not getting good enough or I'm not getting like job, you know, calls back. What advice would you give? I guess look at your work and really think what can I do to improve that and because I feel like I feel like not getting a job um, tends to do a lot of harm in terms of your um, motivation mm -hmm. because I had a moment where I wasn't getting a job and I was getting really depressed but um, I guess when when you go through things like that um, I think support system is really important um, just you know talking to your friends or your family and you know just being really honest like hey I'm you know I'm doing really bad you know I'm I'm feeling really sad that I'm not getting a job and you know your friends will go oh you're doing great you know you we we love the work that you've been producing you can do it sometimes it's just like those little encouragements from your families and friends you know because like when you are in such a competitive industry, you get so down because like everyone is so good and you feel like there's such a long, um, long road ahead of, ahead of you. So um, just turning to your support system, I think is really important um, for you to just kind of, you know, hear the encouragement and that could be a way for you to go for you to go at like oh I can I can now keep going you know I they they made me feel better so you know just gotta keep going you know now, did they make yeah. you feel that it was gonna be okay did they make mm -hmm. you feel confident in yourself yeah yeah, yeah. it's like so there's little things that just keep keep you going it's like don't don't mm -hmm. give up here yeah, it's, it's like one of the things. It's just like don't give up. It's hard because it's like that's easy to say. You tell me, but just don't give up. Yeah, it's a it's a marathon. It's a it's a yeah, long. Yeah, I like that. It's yeah, a super long marathon. And yeah. then you said it before it was very important that like everyone is really good. Like it's insane. Everybody, the the art, the programmers, everybody, just everything they do is just like wow, wow, wow. That's how am I gonna get there? Mm -hmm. Well, it's takes time and there's just, room for everyone it may not seem like it but there's studios opening up here and there mm -hmm. games are getting bigger to make any more people like things there's always some just get good what has been like one of the biggest lessons you've ever learned throughout this whole journey don't give up <laughs> exactly <laughs> what I'm, I'm, to I'm say. Just, like honest like 100% yeah. honest just don't give up because <laughs> i had so many moments where i wanted to give up and you know you just you just gotta keep going and eventually you're there yeah you hear that game to that tv students and everyone else listening don't give up keep going, keep going. you can do it 
<laughs> now, for the end of our podcast, usually we do a like challenge. Well, what is your little challenge for them? It could be anything. It could be art. It could be programming. It could be design. It could be visual. It could be mm. anything. What is your thing? Pick a pick a film that you like. Okay. And do twenty five studies, black and white studies, black in and a white week. Studies. Wow, that's a good one. That's. And you get to learn a lot. Yeah, and you get to watch your favorite film or one of your favorite films. Yeah. Right? Yeah, there you go. Watch uh, some Dragon Ball Z. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So yeah, so this was a this was a lot of fun. I learned a lot about you, the art, and we helped motivate people not to give up. Awesome! Thanks for having me. That was yeah. really fun. And then thank you from Broken Studios for making this happen too. They uh, their favorite thing is they always need a shout out. They're like, <laughs> anybody can come on. Just make sure we shout out some Broken Studios, greatest shout studio out. ever. They're awesome. <laughs> yeah, so thank you for coming on, and uh, we're just gonna hand the mic to you so you can finish it off with any inspirational quotes, any any shout outs to anybody on the team, however you want to end. But yeah, so thank you for coming on. Oh, um, thank you for having me. That was really fun. And you know, shout out to Unbroken Studios. Uh, shout out to Megan for yeah. recommending me. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it. Thanks for listening. You can find all GameDev.TV courses at courses.gamedev.tv slash courses or in the show notes with a 10% discount. Get started with your game development journey today.